Which you guys got another video here for you. You should create this USB flash drive right now, which I'm going to show you. The reason why, if you're running a Windows based operating system, it's more than likely at some point that operating system is going to break. You're going to have some issue with uh, maybe the operating system itself where the files get corrupted, or maybe you'll have some other issue like malware on the system or something along those lines where the actual operating system gets a blue screen of death and you can't boot up to the actual operating system because of a fatal error. So errors are quite common on Windows and this is why this video is so important for you to act on it right now rather than leaving it until the point when this does happen. Because believe me, it will happen. You are going to eventually have a problem with your computer. So having it prepared now is going to save you a headache later on down the line and also a lot of money when your PC fails. Now, if you only have one computer, it's even more important to get yourself a USB flash drive, the fastest one possible, because that way, when you're booting to this flash drive, it's going to be able to load up the applications very, very quickly because of the read and writes on the drive is very fast. They're not cheap, but there is some other alternatives which are a little bit cheaper, which you can use as well. So I'll leave some links in the video description for you. It's best to buy one now and get it prepared ready because this way, if anything happens to your operating system or you have some sort of problem where you need to do date recovery or maybe you need to remove viruses, you can actually use something like this to actually recover your PC. This is a cheaper option, SanDisk 128 gig Ultra Flare. This is a USB 3.0 flash drive. It's only £10, uh, which is pretty cheap, but it's got about 150 right speeds which should do okay for what you need to do you're not going to be using it all the time if you are going to be using it a lot then you need to get a really fast one because that way it makes it much more enjoyable and also you want to keep that nice and cool as well we're going to be using the orico uh, usb 3.2 gen 2 here uh, on this particular type of project and this is because this is a 512 gigabyte and i've got a lot of isos that i want to actually dump on here so this is it right here i'll try and leave some links for this in video description if I can find one. I've had this for a while and it's a type C connector. So if you need a type uh, USB A or USB type C, then you can do. I've plugged it in. Let me just quickly show the speeds on this one so you can see here and you'll get a general idea. I want to show you as much information as possible so you understand the reason why we need a fast drive. Now, another method is to actually buy an NVMe drive and buy an enclosure, which makes that drive uh, an external uh, drive and you can actually dump all your stuff on there as well which will make it super fast so these speeds are not too bad they're pretty livable uh, with that sort of uh, drive that we got here so what we're going to do first is we're going to head over to the website called ventoy now ventoy i've covered before but i wanted to make sure that you guys knew about it especially some of my newer audience so ventoy is an open source piece of software which allows us to create a bootable usb flash drive where we can then drop on all of our favorite ISOs onto there. We don't have to do anything else. We just have to create a bootable USB flash drive with Ventoy and then just drag and drop all of our favorite ISOs onto that drive. And you can then choose any of them to boot to and install, or whether you've got a WinPE or something like that, you can use that method as well. It works with Windows, Linux, and there's also a live CD version there. We're going to go for the Windows version here. But if you're on Linux, you can use the Linux version. Click on this latest version here and then go to the bottom of the page. And down there is the place where we can download uh, the actual files that we're going to need to create our bootable USB flash drive. Now, whatever ISOs you want to download is entirely up to you. I'll show you how to change the theme on it as well. And I'll show you uh, what I'm going to basically put on there, which is what you should put on there. And anything else you add to it is entirely up to you after that. So I've unpacked it and this is what we've got here. I need to click on this Ventoy. Uh, to disk.exe file here. Once we click on this, it's going to open up the actual application and then we're going to choose the drive that we want to put Ventoy onto. So let's go ahead. You should see something looking like this right here. Let me just get this into position so you can see it. And once we get here, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to click on the actual drive here. Make sure you've selected the right drive, otherwise you can end up running into a race in the wrong drive. Once you've selected the right drive, click on install and it's going to warn you that that drive will be erased. So it'll give you another option to check and then say yes. And it will then go ahead and put Ventoy onto that USB flash drive. Now, depending on how fast your drive is, 
will determine how fast you can transfer all of the ISO files onto that drive. So that's why it's best to get the fastest drive possible to make things a lot easier for you when you're dropping uh, your ISO files onto that actual uh, USB flash drive. So I'm going to let this install. It does take a bit of time, so be patient. And uh, it shouldn't take too long once it gets to this stage. There we go. That's all now done. And we are ready to drop all our ISO files onto there. So let me quickly show you how we're going to do this. Now, the good thing about Ventoy is even though you've built your uh, Ventoy USB flash drive, you can always update it at a later date and it will update your Ventoy for you without erasing all of your ISOs, which is a nice little touch. Again, once we've got this done, we can close that off and we can now head over to this PC and you should see your USB flash drive called Ventoy. This is your drive. Depending on how large your drive is, whether you've got a 64 gig, 128 gig or bigger, this is what you're going to have here. It's blank inside here, and that's because we've got no ISO files. So you need to download some ISO files. What I'd recommend you do is download Windows 10 or Windows 11 or both, because you will need these at some point. And if you've got a broken PC and you only have one PC, then having this already is going to save you a lot of trouble. Make sure you keep it updated as well. Don't leave it on there for, you know, months and months and months and months. Keep it updated, and that way you'll have the very latest versions on there in just in case uh, that your PC breaks and you can always boot to at your Windows disk and fix things and also even reinstall Windows. And this is why PC repair shops are so uh, popular, and that's because people don't prepare for the worst uh, before something happens. And if you have this all prepared, you're not going to have any issues. It's going to save you a ton of time and a ton of money because that way you can just quickly reinstall Windows or you can gain access to all your data and back all your data up and then reinstall Windows because it's already prepared for you. So I've got a bunch of ISOs on here. These are probably the most important ones that you need to have on your USB flash drive. What you put on there after that is entirely up to you. You need your version of Windows on there, a copy of Linux if you want to mess around with Linux, and you'll need a WinPE, maybe Hiren's uh, WinPE, and that will have a bunch of tools on here to back up data, do data recovery, fix master boot records and all that sort of stuff on there. And I've also got MSDAR on here as well. And that's what's going to go on here. So I'm going to copy these over to our Ventoy uh, USB flash drive by just copying and pasting here. Or you can just drag them over whatever floats your boat. And once they're on there, we're good enough to change our boot order and boot to our Ventoy USB flash drive. Now, it's important that you keep your Ventoy updated and it's important that you keep your ISO files updated. You can add more ISO files at a later date if you wish without formatting the USB flash drive. And the good thing is that means you can go ahead and download the latest versions of Windows, delete the old ones and put the new ones on there. And that way, if you have a problem with your computer, you've already got your Ventoy USB flash drive with all the correct software on it to fix all of your computer problems and even reinstall Windows. And that way, it's going to save you a lot of money in the long run because most people that I talk to online that want to have a problem fixed don't have a spare PC. They don't have any uh, USB flash drives lying around. And this is why it's important to have this one flash drive with all of the right software on it to help you fix all of your problems with your computer. And that pretty much is half of the battle, is having the right tools for the right job and have them ready to go because if you've only got say one laptop or one desktop and your PC is not booting you're not going to be able to create a USB flash drive like this because your PC is not booting and that's when you're going to have problems and it's going to probably end up taking it to a PC repair shop so this is probably the easiest way to go about doing it so now we've got all of our uh, ISO files on here let me go ahead and now we're going to boot to our drive. So what we're going to do is I'm going to change the boot order and turn off secure boot and all that sort of stuff. Inside here, I'm going to go into the actual uh, BIOS. You may be getting into your BIOS in a different way, whether it be F2, escape key, uh, delete key. Just tap that and get into your BIOS and then you need to change the boot order. I'm going to turn off secure boot as well and turn off fast boot. And basically, once I've done this, we should be able to boot to our Ventor USB flash drive without any problems. So let's go ahead and disable Secure Boot. Now you can put this back afterwards once you've finished working on your PC. So let me go ahead and do the rest of these changes. It's always best to try and leave Secure Boot on uh, once you've finished using uh, Ventor, and that way it keeps you safe as well because it is a security measure. 
And I'm just going through here and checking some of the other features on here. You will need to change the boot order as well. So go to the boot tab and you can see, make sure the first boot one is the actual drive, which we're going to use, which is our Ventoy. Once you finish using it, put it back to Windows and you should be back up and running with Windows afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and disable uh, fast boot as well, just in case there's any problems. And once you boot it up, you should see something looking like this. And now we can see our Dart 10, our Harlan's Boot CD PE version. And we also have our Linux Mint on here. We have two versions of Windows, Windows 10 and Windows 11. And if you've got problems with Windows, you can quickly click on any of these and it will allow you to try to fix the problems with your PC. So let's go ahead and click on one of these and I'll quickly show you. I'm going to click on, say, this one right here, uh, Dart 10. You should see boot to normal mode. I'm going to leave that as is. And we're going to just let this go into troubleshoot. And now we've got the access to all of our diagnostic tools here where we can try to fix Windows. Maybe it'd be some sort of a boot issue or you can do some checks for some corruption. Also, our WinPE is right here. We can get to this and there'll be a ton of tools on here which you can use to either back up your data or maybe back up your user profile, reset Windows passwords, all that sort of stuff. I've covered loads of videos on this. You can check out some of my library for some of these videos. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments section below. I'd be happy to make those videos for you. If you want to jazz Ventoy up a little bit and change the theme, I'll leave the link for this site in the video description. This is basically going to allow you to change the theme to something you like. Now, if you're quite creative, you can change the images to something that you've created. As, as long as it's uh, compatible with it, then basically you should be able to use it. We're going to use this Grub theme this one here because it seems pretty popular and it's got a high rating. So I'm going to download this one and get this installed. Just make sure you're on the Grub themes on the left hand side and we're going to go ahead and download this one. Now it's going to ask you which version you want, whether you want 1080p, whether you want 4K or whether you want 2K. Depending on your size of your monitor will determine which one you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and download the 2K version because I do have a 2K monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and download this one. But if you're on a 1080p, then download the 1080p one and I'll show you how to set it up. Pretty straightforward and easy to do. So let's choose one of these and get this downloaded. It's a very small file. Once we've got that downloaded, we can head back over to our Ventoy uh, USB flash drive. Make sure you got that plugged in and uh, we're at the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly download this and head back over to our computer. There we go. We're inside Ventoy right now. There's my ISO files. I'm going to right click on this, go new folder and create a new folder inside here called Ventoy. Uh, inside this folder, we need to create another folder and this is going to be called themes. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and call this themes like so. And uh, just put an S on the end there. That's it. And what we're going to do is drop our theme inside this themes folder. So we've already downloaded it. And what we're going to do is extract it and put it into here. So let me go ahead and open this up. And what you need to do is make sure you're in the right folder here. So this is the folder we want here because inside here, you can see that themes.txt file. That's the one it's going to read. So I'm going to grab this and drag it over into our themes folder. So let me go in the themes folder and copy this over. And there we go. That's in there now. Next, what we need to do is go back. Inside here, you should see all the files. Let me click on this and show you the actual image files. These are the image files that you can use. And again, if you can create your own, you know how to do it, then by all means, uh, use your own ones if you want. I've done that before. I think I've made videos on how to do that. They're probably very old by now, but they should be uh, still up there. Let me go ahead. And what we're going to do now is click the back button inside this area here. So let's go back one more inside the themes area right here. Click new and text document. So not in the themes folder it, inside that uh, directory here. What we need to do here is we need to right click, rename this. Make sure you're showing file extensions here so you can see .txt. And we're going to overwrite all of that and call this ventoy.json, just like so. And uh, click, say yes. It's going to make a change. And now we can open up the uh, JSON file. So edit with Notepad++ or Notepad, whatever floats your boat. So let's go ahead and click Notepad. Open this up, and I'll leave this uh, text inside the video description for you. And then once you paste this in here, this is the trick. It needs to make sure it says 
Ventoy forward slash themes forward slash, and you can see here uh, this name of the theme right there. That is going to be the name of the theme that you chose to use. You need to change it and rename it. Once you've done that, save it, and we can then boot to it, and you will see that it's changed the theme to that uh, Vimix. So let's go ahead and uh, quickly show you how that looks. So you can see, and it looks something looking like this, which looks a lot nicer to me. And again, you can add in more ISOs at a later date. But these ones, I would say, are the most important ones because you'll have a WinPE there with all your tools on it. You'll have Dart 10, which is a recovery, Windows recovery tool. And you'll also have your versions of Windows, which will fix and resolve any problems with uh, your Windows PC. You can also fix problems with Linux if you know how to use Linux, that is. And uh, you can choose whatever ISOs you want. So if you haven't created your Ventoy USB flash drive yet, then I'll leave some links in the video description for some good USB flash drives that you can use and get yours done right now before uh, you have any sort of issues with Windows. Anyway, my name has been Brian from BrightechComputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next one. Thanks again for watching and thanks for your continued support. Big shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I shall see you again real soon. Bye for now.